And there we are. How are you? What up? What up? Hey, you know, if I was whatever, what up? If I was any better right now, what? I'd have to be twins. I'd have to be well, twins. Well, listen, not everybody has, you know, let me put it to you this way. I love cooking and I love eating mom's home cooked home cooked meals. And then I remember I'm the mom. So you're pretty lucky because your lovely fiance likes to cook and she's the oh, mom. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm a very spoiled man. Yes, no, yes, no crap lucky about lucky. it. I'm a very spoiled man. I know better. Do not take it for granted for one minute. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to another wonderful episode. Of Let's talk about it. It's been a solid week since we, uh, since we've been here. What do you think? It's been a little crazy. Uh, we got to say some hellos, Stephanie, Jen, Brandy, <laughs> Jeremy, yeah. Meg. Stephanie again. Hello, Michael, Chris, Tammy, Judy, Brenda Griffin, <coughs> Brenda Griffith, um, <laughs> Mort. How's it going, Tara? How are you guys? Uh, good to see you. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Oh, crap, that was about as New York as it gets. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Welcome everybody. Um, to <laughs> I'm pretty. Is this why I thrilled to sign and says we're having technical difficulties? Please stand by. Is that where I do this? In my brain. In my brain. Um, so, why don't we get into it? What are we talking about this week, Richard? You know, I gotta tell you guys. Let's let let's let me ask you guys this question, okay? Have you ever been driving down the road with your loved one? Dear friend, spouse, drive down the road and go, damn, that's haunted. Right. I've done it. Lori and yeah. I do it quite often. We can't even get down the block from the house without doing it. Right. Um, because down here in the south, there's like all the houses in the world, they're like 300,000 years older down here. And they got some, they got some stuff going on. Mm-hmm. Denise, good to see ya. Yes, thanks everybody. Welcome, 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 Greg. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Yes, please. Oh no! Well, bless you. I'm going to say bless you already. Oh. I'll, I'll take over while you sneeze. Um. So, guys, oh. you know what? As Richard had said, we're talking about haunted, hello, haunted yeah. attractions. Tammy said what hello. Makes a place so haunted. Why are certain places yeah. haunted yeah. more than others? Is it the Whatever atmosphere? Is. is it the energy? Is it the location? Is it what is it? What do you think it is that's causing the haunted attractions? And so basically, you know, we talk about haunted locations all the time, but we don't necessarily talk about why. And so we thought we'd get into it tonight. We figured that you guys would have a lot of questions about it and that perhaps maybe you would share some stories, enlighten us with certain places that you guys have been to that you figure is more haunted and kind of go from there. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. I was trying to pass along communication from Tammy. Uh, Tammy, Lori says hi. Um, she says hello. But, uh, yeah, she'll get caught on camera once in a while walking by. But, um, yeah, it's, it's just the funniest thing. And that's kind of how, like, Lori and I spend our free time. <laughs> we just drive around and go, ooh, ooh, ooh <laughs> you know. And haunted. it's it's really funny how it, it would kind of... You know. Um, it kind of it'll catch you by surprise, but it's kind of funny how you actually even get that attraction to a place, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's the that's the title and the premise of the show tonight is haunted attraction. So you know there are places I've heard this from a lot of people. There are a lot of places out there that'll go. People say, "I cannot get away from this place." It calls me. I have to go there. It mm -hmm. makes me feel like I belong, etc. And I've heard these things from people. 
it calls first, you. It calls it you. Calls, yeah, you got to be mm-hmm. careful on those. But, yeah, um, you know, I've heard those kind of things from people. But when you have sensitivities and, uh, and abilities, yeah, they call you for another reason. And, you know, those are the kind of things that are kind of fun. Like I said, that's that's all that's all my fiance and I kind of spend our fun time going around looking for haunted locations. Right. It's awesome. It's like, you know, that's a, that's like couple schools. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> Guys, I should I should really kind of reiterate I, I kind of forgot this 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 episode, but I may not be able to see all your comments. We sign cast every episode, so we're on multiple networks, which means that uh not all comments come in the same place. You see me looking down, I'm not ignoring you, I'm not, you know, doing other things. I'm setting up the camera so that I can try and see everybody's comments, but I may miss it. Richard doesn't. Therefore, if you have a specific question for me, please put Katie in the comments and, and hopefully he can he can bring that through, okay? Because I we, we really try to stick to topic comments, but we also try to answer as many as possible. So um, see so yeah, going back to going back to these haunted locations, you know, um, it's not always a place that somebody died that that actually causes hauntings it's not you know it doesn't have to be a specific location sometimes entities choose to um to haunt a location that they've never been to before uh, i actually did a uh did a remote uh view this weekend for a paranormal team down in the states and uh you know part of the activity that they were experiencing wasn't even from that location somebody had conjured something a few doors down and caused activity and so, you know, sometimes it comes down to kind of location or whereabouts things are happening. Uh, you could be experiencing, you know, you could be up the road from a hospital. You could be up the road from an, an old war zone or a prison or, you know, where there's been a lot of catastrophic energy or, or, or injury to, to that death. And that's simply causing the haunting at your place. So there's a lot of rhyme and reason as to why uh, entities kind of occupy certain locations. It is, and you know, it's 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 really true. A lot of times, they're looking for a place just to be. Sometimes, you know, it, it's a lot of things people forget is that the dead are cold. They mm-hmm. thrive off thermal heat or heat, so right. they're going to look for a place to get you know to get that that cold down, to maintain their their ability, maintain their ability to manifest, or you know. And again, they can be they can be scared to death, thinking, "Oh my God, if I don't get enough energy, I'm going to just dissipate and disappear." And there's just a lot of things I've heard from entities over the years during the winter months and things like that as to why they're there, you know. Absolutely. And it's just kind of it's really funny to hear them just say, "You know, I, I just I wanted to be here, or I needed to be here, I wanted some place to go," you know. Um, <laughs> but it is funny though because we. We had done that so often, and I know it sounds rather elementary, but when you when you do that kind of stuff, the energy attracts you, you know. And that's that's the thing I think is probably the most fun out of it all, is how much is the energy going to attract you? How much? Mm-hmm. How far will you let the energy pull you? And uh, like I said before, there are some people I worry about because you know they're they'll be the ones that'll sit there and they'll say. Uh, you know, hey, this 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 place calls me. I've got to be here. I've got to, I get. You, you need to be careful about that kind of dependency on that type of energy. Mm-hmm. That could be a bad thing. But uh, again, there could be there could be reasons that you you while you are there that you are attracted to go into a particular room. And what's funny is for years uh, I had to read through the theory of the reason why you don't want to go in that room isn't because it's not active. Most likely. You don't want to go in that room because something's telling you not to go in that room. It right. doesn't want to be bothered. So usually if I hear, yeah, I don't want to go in there. Yeah, yeah, I want to go in there. So I'll go on ahead and in there anyway. So you have to understand that, that energy to me, with my experience, that energy does go a couple of different ways to pull you or push you away. Yep. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Yes. And I think it doesn't even come down, as you said, it doesn't even necessarily come down to a location that you're gravitating towards. It can come down to an object, you know, where you're, you're just, you're drawn to it. You want to, you want to, you know, whether it be a mirror and scrying or, or, you know, something that's drawing you to kind of investigate or to spend time with, give it your energy. That's the bottom line is it's wanting you to give it your energy. And when that occurs, yeah. it's not always bad, but there are those bad tendencies. 
I just want to interrupt really quick in our conversation and say hi to everybody who just jumped in. Thank you so much. We've, we've got a ton more people coming in. So thank you. And I want to say thank you to Penny. Yeah. Penny had just said she shared for us. Thanks, Penny. We really appreciate that. If you like what thank you, you see, appreciate don't, that very don't, much. don't be uh, you know shy to share it out so that we can hopefully touch more, more people and educate or learn from more people and kind of get the group circle bigger. Um, but going back yeah, to... I going back to the, the the location or or the object again you know energy can be held in an object that goes from place to place to place therefore uh you know think of it this way a vehicle a vehicle can drive from from many different locations and still be haunted it doesn't have to be set in one premise and the same thing goes for energy there are transient entities or transient energies that flow so in neighborhoods for example where i live uh you know confidentially I have investigated and I have cleansed multiple houses on my street of the same activity. Problem is because of yeah. confidentiality, I can't tell each person that I've been to each person's house. So they're all experiencing the same thing. They're all, I can't give names because it's very, you understand it's very close knit, but I can, I can correlate that evidence and realize that it's actually t quite transient and it moves uh, from place to place. So uh, I think it's a lot more, uh, common that we give it credit for we don't talk about it as much when we when we get into a residual haunt where we're having activity people are afraid they don't want to ask their neighbors they don't want to come across as being crazy when really the activity is bigger than you think it is right now holly has brought up a point i think it's a very important point because I, I believe in it as well that uh she's i'm a firm believer in spirits pick us we don't necessarily pick them mm -hmm. agreed and energy breeds energy. I'm a real big believer in what I call the metaphysical algorithm, that if your energy level matches another energy level of a person that's passed on, that will be your mm -hmm. connection because they, had, they, had, they live in that same algorithm, that same energy point. Um, and, yeah, I, I do believe that uh, they, they do pick and choose. I have seen entities pick one recorder, digital recorder, over another, and they were mm -hmm. four feet apart. I have seen yeah. them... Uh, hit instruments that are able to detect the same energy energy levels one over the other. So they are very selective about the things they do. Uh, the one thing, though, I think is, is important to bring up, we're going to probably bounce around a lot tonight, because I think the one thing I've got to pick up is, is again, safety. Safety. you got to be careful when you go into these places that, you know, uh, I hear there's a little girl. You know what? You say that often enough, guess what you think is going to pop up? Little girl. Um, and that's just kind of how it rolls. You've got to be careful of it. And it's not a little girl. <laughs> so, you know, we just had an investigation last night um, where uh, I think, no, it was that uh, we went to a location, a cemetery prior to go into the investigation. And, uh, you know, my fiance Lori's voice got mocked. You know, that's, that's kind of odd, you know, but it wasn't exactly yeah. her voice and she wasn't saying a word. Yeah, so there are just things, I'm not saying that's a danger, but I mean, there are things like that. You have to understand, again, they leave off your energy. If you are around, they will do whatever it takes. Quite often times, they will do whatever it takes to keep you there, to keep on absorbing your energy until you're done. So you got to be careful, you know? Yeah. Um, now, Charles had Charles had a great question. He said, "Don't you think a lot of haunted houses are just residual spirits or residual energy?" So let's break down residual really quick. So there's intelligent haunts and there's residual haunts. Intelligent haunts meaning they're communicative. The entity realizes you're there or is able to communicate back and forth. And a residual haunt is something that is kind of like a replay in time. So it's a time loop. They may not even be aware that you're there. They're going through the motions hourly, daily, weekly, monthly. Um, right. There's a little bit of both to, to answer that. What do you think, Richard? I would say there's a little bit of both. Uh, you know, there are situations where, yes, in fact, there is residual energy happening. But we get a lot of investigations where, you know, they're answering us. They simply want to be heard. They want to be justified. They want, you know, help going somewhere, doing something, getting home, or, or they're lost, or, or simply even... Uh, they don't like the way their life went down. And so they're trying to kind of justify that before they cross over. But th there's a little bit of both. I, I, I couldn't say there's more one than the other. What about you? I'll tell you, I, and I support that. I think I support more of the intelligent over the residual. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. And here's why I say that. It's really not the answer I think some people would look at. I think right now with the equipment that we have, the methodologies that we use, we're testing the ground and, and looking for the water temperature for intelligent spirit because you're asking questions, looking for answers. And right. the same guy, the residual energy that walks up and down the hallway at 10 p.m. every single night is doesn't even know you're there. It will do it whether you're there or not. But if you can get an entity to answer a question, now you're talking about intelligent. But all the equipment today pretty much is looking for intelligent spirits instead of looking for residual spirits. It wants to talk through an obelisk or it wants to talk through any any other different type of ITC device. Uh, then you've got them interacting with, with meters, K2 meters, EMF meters, static filtration meters. All of this is asking them to interact, which means they have to be intelligent. So a lot of the times I think you're going to wind up having more of the intelligent picked up than a residual because we're not really looking for residual. No. In our in our investigation mm-hmm. methods, we're not. Mm-hmm. We're we're in essence trying to communicate with spirits, right? We're trying to yeah. we're trying to kind of get you know justify and get them to answer us. Agreed. Absolutely agreed. I think that in a residual situation, the ba- uh, at least in my experience, what you know what what we have done is we've left cameras. Residual, you know, you leave cameras either for a minimum few hours, maximum, you could leave a couple weeks if you really chose to, if you had enough, if you had enough data and enough, uh, you know, memory, you leave them as long as you can. But I think that you're going to notice a lot more going through. Um, but there's also one other, there's one other typical t- type of haunting that a lot of people are not aware of. Okay, so we have the two basics. We have your, you know, your intelligent haunt and we have your residual haunt. But a lot of people don't realize that we also get excerpts from the other side. So you are, we've all talked about, you and I have talked about this before, the good old clock radio effect, where you hear uh, people having a conversation. It sounds like there's a clock radio going off. You know, you can hear the radio playing, but you can't make it what it's saying. That's not always residual energy. That can be, in fact, communication from the other side. There's a, a thinning in the veil, and you're actually hearing that. You're hearing it could be helpful. entities, it could be uh, guides, Chris. it could be, uh, I'll go out there and say angels, but there's th- that could be going on. So uh, it's not necessarily a loop in time. You're actually hearing the other side having these conversations. And so uh, if you give it some time when you're doing these investigations, you're taking, you know, you're trying to collect the evidence don't be afraid to put over even one recorder out leave it out overnight or leave it for a couple days because you'd be surprised what you're going to pick up yeah and that's that's absolutely true um you know i think if if anyone wants to, to try to get a good sense for the percentage of residual over intelligent haunts here's a recommendation because i've done it take a digital recorder put it on a dresser announced to the entire cast of the dead in the building. If you'll come talk to this red light, okay, we will find out you're here and we'd love to communicate with you and shut up. What kind of responses are you getting? Richard Fashion, shut up. <laughs> and just shut up. It's 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 designed to if you're asking questions and seeking an intelligent answer, that's an intelligent haunt. The residual evidence that it gets really skewed then because you're all you're asking for is questions answered. If you just leave a recorder there, you're going to record what comes in. Now, it could be a kid crying for mommy, mommy, mom. I've had these done. It's wild. Then you could have some that actually, you know, walk up and go, what's this? You know, that's an intelligent. But a lot of times it gives you a good idea, I think, to be able to judge what you're actually dealing with. So if there is an entity or three or, or whatever that are in that building and they, you know, they, they just talk as if they've always said the same thing for a million years. And then, you know, the next thing you get is an entity going, you know, who are you and what are you doing here? Uh, you know, right. what can I do for you? What do you want? It's just a way to be able to judgment, but we don't, I mean, typically we, we grab all these pieces of equipment and we go out and we, we do our best to find what we think of the answers, which we do, that's our job is to find the answers. But when you do that, the only credit, the only credit you're giving anything that is passed on is intelligent. But meanwhile, there is a lot of trapped energy or, or residual energy. There's a lot of it out there. 
and you could capture a ton of it. I've done this. I've left a recorder in a room overnight, nine hours. Didn't say a word other than you'd come and talk to this if you want to. Just talk to this red light. I left that room. I woke up the next morning. I went and collected the recorder. And I'm sitting there listening to both residual and intelligent haunts. They're, they're both there. So, again, to me, it's, it's just one of those things we have to look at. I know it's a little off track with our subject topic tonight. But, you know, for me, it's just kind of one of those things. That's an attractant. I'm an audio guy. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm strictly an audio guy. I, I like to capture video evidence. Don't get me wrong. I've caught a lot of it, photographic and video evidence. But, man, the ability just to, to talk to the dead, that is my, that's my, that's my crack. If I'm going to say I've got a, an addiction to something, that is my drug of choice. I would love to have a digital recorder, sit in a room, and get what am I going to say next, Katie? Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. In a and true this, this, fashion. <laughs> to, yeah. I mean, you'd be surprised. To me, that is so cool. And I've had people boo-hoo the attraction of, of going somewhere for EVPs. Uh, who doesn't want to talk to history? I mean, come on for a minute. It's history. We, Lori and I went, my fiance and I went to a place called the Confederate Cemetery in Resaca, Georgia, before we went to the investigation. 80% of the headstones in the cemetery are, say, unmarked soldier, unnamed soldier. And I was there once before, and I had a conversation with a soldier that had been injured and subsequently died of his injuries. And, you know, I asked him, how do you, are you one of the ones that are considered un, unnamed or unknown? And he said, yeah. And I'm like, how does that make you feel? He said, forgotten. So, yeah, I mean, the evidence you get is, is video, photographic evidence is wild. That's great. It's a holy grail. To me, my attraction to a location is how much am I going to talk to you? Yep. What are you willing to talk to me about? Because my EVP questions are very unconventional in a lot of ways. They're not the typical, well, why are you here? Why do you stay? What brings you here? No. No. My questions are kind of along the lines of, what would you like to tell us that will help us live our lives better? And then you get the answers. I've gotten answers the last time we did that at the Hamilton House uh, three trips ago. I asked that question, and I got a, a man I believe was John Hamilton who, who built a home, and he said, just live life. That's a dead person telling you that, man. That's cool. That is, that is my attraction. That is my drug of choice. Is give me a digital recorder, a Bluetooth speaker with a wire and a set of earbuds, and I'm set. Yeah, I've done it in my car, yeah. sitting in a parking lot of a building. <laughs> right. Since I, I wow. knew it was active. Yeah, you brought up a really great point because you talked about residual energy and 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 uh, t intelligent hauntings that can kind of play hand in hand, and and. Yeah. You used a great word, you used layered. And, and I again, I don't think a lot of people realize this. Layered hauntings can happen where you're having oh, yeah. multiple entities in one location. They either don't know each other's there or they don't cross each other's paths or they each stay at their end of the house or in each other's room. Or it's not as if they're all going to daily dinner today. You know, they're, they're, they're not right. sitting down and having a group ghost meal. Um, they have their reasons for, for being attracted to that certain room, uh, location, space object okay and a lot of times entities are quite territorial last you no know, two years ago now we went to um a, an old military base that turned out to be a psychiatric ward, i believe and uh they it, it was like a hospital and it housed a lot of people and during our walkthrough we had gotten to the second or third floor and the gentleman who was walking us through showing us where we we're going to be investigating and a woman entity came out and scratched me right on the neck and was like, get out. She did not want me in that area. And I jumped back because it was as real to me as you are. You know, I thought, what is this person doing? And she scratched, she disappeared. And I had scratch marks on my neck and, and, and I told them this is what happens. And so the gentleman that, that was doing the walkthrough was like, yeah, that's the room that the crazy ladies in. I was like, thanks for the heads up. Um, but it was a really <laughs> cool experience because it was a firsthand experience. I got to, I got to experience that. Uh, you know, number number two, I, it was valid. My psychic abilities were coming through, and I was able to explain that, you know, and validate that. But it's the fact of the matter yeah. that she, even though she knew we were coming, she knows that 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 people were coming for the investigation. She was still territorial about her 
specific space. Sure. And so it, not only are they territorial about us being live beings, but they're territorial about other entities sometimes. And so you'll get that bickering sure. back and forth in a location where it's like you'll, you'll hear one entity say run and hide or he's coming or sometimes there's there's that alpha in the in in that ghost pack we'll call it that kind of makes everybody else scatter or makes everybody come to order um oh, i absolutely. find that doing evp sessions and maybe you can kind of because you're the EB, evp guy but have you ever found that guess when you're doing evps so electronic voice phenomena for those of you that don't know what evps are so that means that you ask a question and you get an answer back it, it, during the audio so you have an audio recorder or a video recorder and it's not always heard in present times so you have to play back to get the answers but right. do you ever find that uh you know it's cyclical in the sense that it gets it, it gets busy you're hearing a lot of conversation then it goes dead and then it gets busy and it goes dead but do you ever get it where entities will kind of go stop talking and all of a sudden they're gone you know like we got to be quiet now and kind of leave oh yeah yeah they get they get yeah. tired and and that's kind of why I, I won't stay very long in each each location or if I have a location with a lot of a lot of space, I won't stay in the same space very long because they get they get tired. They they do. Um, you know, it's the whole dog and pony show. They didn't have to do it when they were alive, you know, and, and they're and they're going to continue to have to do it. Um, you know, they they're going to have to. Uh... Oh, he's dead. Um, we're gonna we're gonna do an investigation of this bug that. Lori just killed. Um, it was a spider. It was a spider. Got it, honey. It's going to rain she now. Like spiders. She doesn't like spiders. Um, but, you know, I mean, so to me, I don't I don't like to wear them out. Uh, you can feel, as a psychic medium, I don't know you'll agree with this, you can feel the energy come and go. To me, energy has always been very cyclical. So, you know, they'll come through, they'll, they'll do some stuff to help out or, or to, to um, you know, kind of make you understand they're there, but they don't, they really don't. I've never had any of them say, Oh, sure, just ask me an hour's worth of questions. No, no. yeah, right? I'm they they do, they get tired. Encore, please. Yeah. No, they're usually, yeah, encore. One more song. No, that's not how it works, <laughs> you know. Um, then I've had a lot of them. I've had one at the Red Hotel, um, uh, on the third floor. Uh, William Raines uh, literally was so tired of asking questions that Class A EVP, which means Class A means you don't even have to touch it to get to know what he's saying. Class A, he says in EVP, you're not getting nothing. I'm like, oh, all righty. Calm down, bro. Calm down. You know, then you realize you warm out. You realize you need to move on. Stop pushing. Stop sticking this. Uh, Stop poking the stick to get the to bear to play. Right. You wear them out and they don't want to deal because they don't have to deal with you. That's that's the whole point. They can ignore your ass the entire time you're there if they want to. I've had to go into into locations um, and literally apologize to the spirits in the building before I can conduct my investigation because the last group that went in there was a band of Yahoos that provocated. And did all kinds of stupid stuff in the building, like using a Ouija board in a haunted location, just to stir up activity. And I won't tell you the answers I got back and the, and the remarks I got, uh, but from the in EVPs from the intelligent spirits that are in that building is God, please don't do that ever again. Literally got that EVP. Please do not ever do that again. You know, say, talking about the the Ouija board, it yeah. not every spirit likes that. You know. They know what happens, good, bad, and ugly. So yeah. they, they may not want to play with that either. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's just kind of one of those things where they get tired. Yeah. So let's break it down a little bit. So we've got residual energy, we've got haunted energy, or you know, intelligence, we've got layers. What is it about a location that attracts these entities? Is it the actual energy? Is it is it the fact of the matter that deaths occurred? Is it the tragedy? Is it the sorrow? What do you think it is that in certain locations, and this is an open-ended question, what do you think? Why, why do you think they're attracted to certain places? I have had, um, as, as you have, many, 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 many years of investigating. Uh, I have literally asked this kind of question. You know, 
why here? Why now? Why, why not go home with your family? Why not, you know? And, and what the answer I got over the years with about four or five different investigations was some very superb and intelligent, wonderful spirits. Simply was, when I went, I feel confused. Mm -hmm. I feel dazed. I feel drugged. I don't know what's going on. And the first thing they look for is a place that they're familiar with. It eliminates the confusion. So if you put in 10, 15, 12 hour days at a job and you went there for 20 years, there's a good chance you're going to that job because you know it. Yep. You understand the area. You know what the building looks like. It's not confusing to you. But I literally have had an, a spirit entity tell me it was a doctor literally told me that being on the other side is like being on Demerol. Yep. Great. Being on Demerol. And I that's, that, you know, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I think as well, what people don't realize is that sentiment, sentiment is, is a really strong word. We use sentiment every day. You know, things become sentimental to us. We keep them because they're sentimental. Sentimental also falls onto the other side. So, um, that kind Amen. of grounds us and adds a tetherment to it. So the sentiment could be an object, it could be a place, it could be a thing, it could be a person. And that sentiment, as you mentioned a little bit earlier, of that person going to the job for 20 years, I mean, the, he complained every day he hated his job, but the bottom line was he went every day, was loyal. That is creating a sentiment, whether it's a good sentiment or bad sentiment, there's still an attraction there. And that in itself is what kind of creates, it could be residual, it could be intelligent. So, yeah. Um, you know, not every not every graveyard, not every not every cemetery is fully haunted. Not every um, hospital has just got an unhappy ghosts because they died in a hospital. There's sometimes hospitals are happy places. There's babies born. There's people's lives saved. It's not always a sad event. And mm. why do those entities choose to stay in those locations? It doesn't always have to be a negative indentation. I find right. that when there is a physical and an emotional expulsion of energy that has occurred in that location whether it be tragic or even excitement happens, that is almost a victory uh, for the location. So that is still harboring, and that's what brings other entities in. So very rarely, you know, are, are all the entities in a location actually from that location. And people who go out on public haunts will start to realize that the, the locations they go to, the activity starts to increase as more people generate and go to these places, whether it be through hitchhikers, people are picking up, you know, entities and bringing them with them or residuals from pieces of uh, furniture or equipment brought in. Or it could be the fact of the matter that they're close to other locations of tragedy. A few people had mentioned right. earlier about right. about train tracks and train stations and stuff. Um, and, and, you know, them being haunted. What makes a train haunted? What is it? Is it the is it the energy that the train is experiencing going through? Is it the fact that what was on that train when it occurred? What is causing it? But that's a common denominator. Is it the the actual, uh, you know, energy being utilized while it's going over the tracks? Is it the iron? Is it the earth under the train tracks? But we all have those stereotypical locations that we're finding that are typically haunted. And it, I would be really interested to kind of do a field uh, project to see what the common denominator is with these places. Very true. Now, I was kind of hoping you were going to talk a little longer because I got a face full of That's coconut okay. and macaroni. Oh, honey, I can talk all night. <laughs> okay. Um, we've got some questions, though. We've got a couple questions I want to get into really quick. Um, so uh, Joshua had said, we were, you were talking about EVPs, and, and Joshua said, you know, why should they answer your questions? They, you know, they the time is now, and what I told them a lot, what he heard a lot from Spirit is that why bother? In other words, what's the point in answering these questions? It's not going to change uh, it's not going to change their situation. And it's true. Right. A lot of these entities get, get uh, stuck on it. Now, you're going to find that public haunts, so places that you can go to pay money to go, and even if you could go for free, cemeteries, but really hot spots of activity, you're going to find that those those uh, energies are not necessarily as eager to speak to you. Some of them are. But I find that the best investigation the best data or evidence that I've collected are places that not a lot of people go to because the entities are like, 
oh my goodness, you can see me, you can hear me, it's been a long time, and all they want to do is talk. So if you guys are interested in experimenting and you want to try to go to, to different locations, try somewhere that is off the beaten path, because I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Um, you may be able hey, to Chrissy. help somebody, you may be able to, you know, get them to cross over, and you may, you know, in the, the least get some really good evidence. Yeah. And I, and I, I, I've been preaching on that for years. So I want to, I want to cover something as far as the residual energy goes real quick for those who don't fully understand the process. So residual energy and a definition thereof is basically energy that will repeat itself, whether you're there or not, doesn't know you're there. You can't interact with it, yada, yada, yada. But here's the thing. Most oftentimes that residual energy is basically an, an entrapping energy point. It's, it is written in time for a reason. Um, I've been investigating in places where a murder happened, and that same murder replays itself out, I don't know how many times a day, but that energy got trapped mm -hmm. because it was such a dramatic experience for those entities in that building. That, that really burned a moment in time. So it goes a little bit beyond, oh, yeah, they just walked down the hall at 10 o'clock. There are things that are that dramatic that you you will understand that it will actually like murders like i said this murder this stabbing happened have i don't know how many times a day it happened they just continue to relive the same death and murder essentially all the time because of how traumatic that event was energy wise it literally burned a moment in time so to me that's pretty interesting as well when you when you're investigating to deal with something that why am I getting this young girl yelling for mommy every single time? Like, well, what the hell's bar dam? There was this girl that would you know, yell for mommy like she was lost. I don't know how many times every time I was there. Why? What happened that, that made that child search for her mother? You know, so I like for us to kind of challenge ourselves to not only look at, oh, the intelligence stuff's great. He told me to get the hell out. And that's great. But look deeper. And get to know why all the energy happens, mm -hmm. right? Why the residual right. energy goes the way it goes. Why do you have a kid constantly crying for mommy? Look into that. It's it's some pretty neat stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I didn't mean to digress a whole lot, but this is one of those things where it's a passion for me. I want to know more. How, I mean, if you heard a child walking down your street crying for mommy, would you not investigate what's going on? Exactly. I would. Oh, well, it's no it different comes, if they're dead or alive. Down, yeah, I think it comes out of the commercialization, though. I think that the mainstream, and I'll get flack for this, I'm saying that every episode lately, but uh, I think the mainstream, you know, outlook on paranormal investigating is to correlate the best evidence and get something on video and camera that, you know, you can show everybody instead of actually getting into the basis of the location. In my opinion, going multiple times collecting that evidence over a long period of time is more of a scientific basis of coming up with that hypothesis as to whether something's going on. You know, is it in fact that you went so many times to, to the, to the dam that you realized that, you know, it was legit. It was a little girl. It wasn't something trying to mimic you yeah. and get you off to the, off on your own or to kind of jump you in the sense that it was trying to, you know, jack your energy. Um, but, right. but you were able to kind of get to that conclusion that there really, in fact, was something going on. Now, somebody had mentioned, Charles had mentioned uh, the stone tape theory. And stone yeah. tape theory is uh, basically, for those of you that don't know, it's basically it kind of um, uh, yeah. absorbs into the local energy or local area. Um, stone tape meaning that it would go into magnetically it, and from there it would replay out, like out it would re the energy would replay itself so everything it absorbs a cup absorbs energy in theory you know uh, the mouse absorbs energy everything that you kind of uh, put into will we'll push it back out so yes that's a really good a good um, comment yeah and then and Chrissy has put up a good one too she said but question but can can residual ever stop even upon discovery uh, I would say yes. I, I think mm -hmm. eventually, in my experience, the energy will run its course if anything else ever happens to, to absolutely just, you know, delete the energy. Eventually, the energy runs its course. You know, whereas where you'll have a negative spirit or negative energy, that gets stronger with age. A positive energy gets weaker with time. 
right. and eventually, eventually, they will run out of the energy. Now, in places right. like in the southeast U.S., we have a very large deposit of limestone and quartz. Now, limestone and quartz is nothing other than essentially a battery and a hard drive. <laughs> I mean, right. you've you got you've got the ground, you've got the geology recording history. And then you've got, you know, the battery running this same thing over and over and over and over again. So the shelf life, as I've researched, the South is well over 500 years in paranormal activity on the regular. Whereas in some other states, as you go further north, that kind of dissipates a little bit. Um, not a lot, but a little bit. But everything has a lot to do with how is it being recorded? Is it being recorded on that foundation of quartz and limestone like it is in the South? Because that's what makes it stay around like a maniac. Uh, so you'll have that. Plus, a lot of places in the South were built on underground rivers, underground streams. And all that's doing is constantly cycling energy up through the ground. So, you know, in a case of Hell's Bar Dam, for example, it was a hydroelectric dam. It was built to have the river run the turbines to be able to deliver energy. Those turbines still move. They're underwater, but they still move. You catch that place in June or July or August. When the water is up high enough, you'll see a whirlpool in the water when the turbines are still moving. So we wonder why places like that are active with residual and or intelligent haunts. Well, wow, there you go. Yeah, but again, in the south, you have a quartz and limestone. Then you have a lot of underground streams and rivers. Mm -hmm. All of that builds up. Yeah, and somebody had mentioned ley lines. Ley lines are basically yeah. lines of energy. Uh, the pyramids are on ley lines. Stone hedges on uh, ley lines. There's a lot of places in New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, Ontario, Canada, where I'm sitting right now. There's there's definitely ley lines, and it's basically highways or rivers of energy. And what there's there's been um, um, the famous uh, Ram Inn in in U Ooh. the UK is also on, on oh. a ley line and there's a lot more energy that happens. So um, it's not always necessarily the building that you're experiencing or, or, or the objects or the people in the building. It's what's actually underneath that is ramped it up. As Richard had said, you know, in this area, we have a lot of limestone. We do have quartz as well, but we have a lot of limestone and that is, uh, you know, a, another battery back, you know, absorbent for energy. So, uh, you know, you'll, you'll notice that there's certain places that have, have more than others. Um, it's also guys, we have to, we, we kind of forget, we get right to the physical aspect. We get to the physical aspect of, we live in a physical world. So we, we come to that physical logical explanation that it's the, the water and it's the, you know, it's the ley lines and it's the courts and it's the house and it's, but we forget, think of a wartime zone. Think of even Gettysburg. I'll refer to Gettysburg. There was a lot of emotion that went on in that location during the war. A lot of sadness and anger and uh, resentment and fear and, uh, you know, uh, determination. All of those pushes of energy, we'll call it, okay? Those expulsions of energy. That had to go somewhere. And what it did was it absorbed back into the area. And that adds right. to that replay. So uh, the spirit that you know, we're not aware of death or we're confused at death or we're afraid to cross over, they chose to stay. And then you have that layer of residual energy where the war is still happening because of that energy, uh, you know, being expelled. And because it was kind of that stone tape theory, you're, you're getting that side of things too. So, um, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad location. It could be a moment of happiness where you're getting that residual every day at three o'clock. Grandma comes and sits down and she smiles in her chair. It's because she was so happy and that that push of energy came out and that's what stuck. Yep. Yep. Now, Earl, forgive me if I screw your last name up. Don't mean to, brother. Earl Gundelach. Um, Gundelach. He says, I yeah. feel you guys should talk about folklore going to an area, calling out a creature or creating its reality. Okay. So we have yeah. we have talked about we have talked about folklore quite a bit actually. Uh, if you want to check out some of our old episodes, you're more than welcome to do that. But we would always keep talking about it, eh, Richard? Well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now. There is actually a creature that we were found out through our multiple investigations at the Wright Hotel that is called a boggart. Boggart in the Fey lore is uh, basically a house servant type of entity now people are like well how did and it's prevalent in the uk right 
So people are like, well, how did an entity like that get to the southern United States? We let me explain it to you. Um, the area that this creature, the building this creature has been seen and recorded in on camera and other spirits in the building have admitted that he exists and he's real. Spirits have admitted to this. Um, that area, that building, that land was developed by Irish, Irish and Scottish immigrants. Okay. He came over with somebody. Um, yes, he has been pictured. We had an incident where, and I thought you'd appreciate this, Earl, that's why I'm saying it. But um, we had a, a lady on a tour that is a phenomenal artist, phenomenal artist. And uh, we were doing it in, in, you know, doing an EVP session on the second floor of this hotel. And she literally went, whoa. And I'm like, what What happened? And she said, did, did anybody else see that? I'm like, what, what are you talking about? She said, I can't. I, I was like, this is, I can draw it. And literally, we, we found a pad, and she drew it, and then we did a lookup on Google. And to, I would say a good 90-plus percent matches up with something called the Boggart. In that lore, you have Boggart, Brownie, and Bogle. So these are all supposedly mythical creatures. Mm, not so mythical. We got them right there in Chatsworth, yeah. Georgia. So, yeah, I appreciate that, Earl. But, yeah, that's just kind of something for you. Um, what's going on, Howard? Yeah, Holly's like, my basement's limestone. It's all, you know, all the ground and then cane is crazy. Limestone's good stuff. Um, Earl says, for example, the candy man. Uh, yeah, those are kind of creatures that could be, you know, here's, here's the thing. Just kind of put it in a, in a nutshell, I think. Your mind is your most powerful ally. Or your biggest enemy. Right. So if you try hard enough to manifest something, you maybe a group of your friends, maybe a regional aspect on a particular item, and ooh, I saw the Slender Man. Ooh, I saw this. Ooh, I saw that. Eventually, you can manifest it. It was actually proven on a on a paranormal investigation show that they were able to actually manipulate the spirit that was there mm -hmm. to become something that didn't even exist. I saw it. I'm like, wow, that's really interesting. Yep. That's really interesting. I mean, that just goes to show you when you have what I call vacant identified energy. So when you have something that it doesn't really know what it's like, that's really kind of in a lot of ways too what a doppelganger is. It really doesn't have a set personality or, or look. Mm -hmm. So it will copy you because it's, oh, okay. It's, oh, okay. You look like that. Oh, okay. But that's just kind of what it is. You can create a lot. You can actually create Earl, an entity. I'm going to agree with you on this point. You can you can create an entity mm -hmm. by manifesting it through through an investigation and, and basically manipulating the energy to become something that never existed. I don't yeah. recommend it. <laughs> yeah, I don't recommend it, but it, it can happen. Yeah, it can happen. Yep. I think yep. that a lot of the public cons that we have, you create monsters. I also think it comes down to the conjuring too. So it, you, you have to be careful when you're doing your investigations that you're actually, uh, you know, uh, dealing with the entities, in fact, in the location and not you're, you're not requesting more to come in. As a psychic walking into a oh, location, no. um, I get yeah. my fair share of people who are at a location location or spirits entities that are at the location but i also it's kind of like a payphone right so it's a collect call and they're going oh she can see us she can hear us i have messages for this person and this person and this person think of it this way guys yeah. you decide to go to a psychic reading you go to a group gallery gallery reading so that means that everybody's sitting around and you know when i do gallery readings i i, I read everybody uh, i do smaller groups but some people don't so you'll have 100 people in, in a room you all have the active intent that you want to communicate with somebody or get answers of something that active intent goes out, out to the, to the air. We'll call it out to the, to the ambient energy in the room. Where do you think it goes? It doesn't go anywhere. It stays there, right? Even though you get up to go and leave, your intent has been put into that location. And so that in itself, as Richard had, had mentioned, when you're going to these certain locations, that active intent to, you know, wanting to see something evil or the big green man, you can in fact create that and the same thing goes with energy and emotion so we often talk about you know 
communicating with spirits and, and walking into a room and, and you know there's a, there's an entity occupying the, that location but we forget about the actual energy of emotion in those locations so you may not see a spirit you may not experience an evp or a residual energy in, in in the sense that it's it's walking beside you every hour but you're actually picking up on the the empathic emotions of these things so you feel sadness every day at three o'clock for some reason you feel sad or you know you're 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 uh there's another entity oppressing that sadness onto you or anger or resentment or whatever and we don't give that enough credit so i encourage people if you're, if you're going to be trying to go and investigate really start to get to know you get to know your energy and get to know your people with you I don't encourage investigating on your own because you have to be in check. And it's important for one investigator to the other or a partner uh, that you know you. I've, I've had certain instances, even as a psychic medium, and I take my investigation seriously and my cleansing seriously. I have still run into situations where uh, I didn't realize that I did a change or my energy changed or I was kind of enveloped by something and they had to wake me up as well as me saying it to other my other teammates. So really pay right. attention to all energy, energy, just not what you're visually hearing and seeing. No, true. Yeah. You know, and, and a lot of people, you know, and a lot of times we've talked about, you know, who you, who you are actually interacting with and how that can absolutely in, impact and affect your investigation. Um, I have had entities over the years tell me point blank. I, I don't want to talk to her. Yeah. I don't want to talk to her. You know, so I would have that investigator leave the room, go to another section of the location, and then they would start talking. Um, you know, uh, but, uh, you know, Alfred made a point a minute ago, and we've talked about it time and time again as well. We're beating a dead horse, but it's, true. it's your intent. What's your intent? Is your intent to go in there and forgive my language, have the oh shit moment? Is that your intent? I mean, you could get that yeah. watching television shows. Um, you know, if your intent is to go in, as, as Katie said, and research a location, which means you really need to go more, a lot more than once. Uh, I think we've been in the right hotel close to 35 times. Uh, Hamilton House now, I've been there nearly 12. Um, it's just one of those kind of things that the, it's like an onion. The more layers you peel back, the more you discover. And it has a lot to do with the relationship that you also foster um, with with the entities in the building, you get to a point where you're respectful, treat them right, talk to them, engage them as if they're still living in a lot of regard. You're going to get a lot more out of them than you ever could imagine getting out of them being a jackass. Okay, don't take the vibrata of certain people and use it for your own way to investigate. Now, that's my personal recommendation after 26 years. Don't use somebody else's vibrata because it's a mistake. It truly is. It's a mistake. And I won't even say any more than that. When we I'm uh, be in yeah, trouble. When, when people uh, when I get phone calls from people and they say, I don't know, my house was was fine. You know, it's been fine. I've been in it for 20 years and two years ago, I've started to experience stuff and it's gotten bad or, you know, I, you know, it was fine for the first year. And then all of a sudden the action started. It's really important to find out what did you purchase that you could have brought in the house? What changes occurred? So was there a catastrophic injury? Was there a hydro wire, hydro dam? Was there what changed in your, your, your um, demographic area to cause that? Okay, what did you purchase? Did you go through a traumatic event? Did you go to a haunted location? There's a many, many, many different factors and various reasons why a, a haunting can occur. Um, and even a residual haunting, all of a sudden there's a man that walks by every day at six o'clock. Why all of a sudden now? Could he potentially have died six months ago? And that's why you're starting to pick up on it now. But we don't give that enough credit. We don't we take that time to research. So it's really important, again, to find out kind of what's going on around you rather than the actual entity. And you have to remember, they may not be able to tell you. They may not know. Right. As Richard had mentioned earlier, there's delirium and there's there's a lot of layers to uh, to death. We had talked about it last week, guys. For those of you mm -hmm. who didn't catch last week's episode, go back and watch it. We talked about the process of death. We talked about kind of the way that it works and, and there's different 
uh, ascension planes that they have to go through. This, you have to realize that when someone dies, the same thing occurs. Okay. Right. So uh, when you start to experience that haunting, you know, all of a sudden grandpa's attached to the, to the watch that, uh, you know, you just took out of the drawer. All of a sudden now you're seeing activity of grandpa touching the, the watch. Well, was it the change that you made that could have caused that to occur? Was it the fact that, you know, what, what made you want to get it out? Did he implant that thought into your head? So it kind of freed him in the sense that he could come around now. There's many different factors that, that kind of happen. Well, you know, it's funny because we, we've talked again, multiple, multiple times regarding energies, right? So let me explain something to you. Katie does a lot of readings. A lot of readings. I do a few, no. couple or a few a week uh, now. Um, if we say something is, we get something is about to happen, there's only one way that that's going to change and not happen, is if you change the energy surrounding it. If the energy around that particular issue changes, it's going to change the outcome. It can change okay. the outcome. You know, um, so there's this things that you can do uh, maintain things the way they are. What we tell you is liable to happen is going to happen. And as Katie has said multiple times, and I have as well, because people need to understand it, it may happen three days from now. could happen three weeks from now. could happen two years from now. It's going to happen. It's coming. So, you know, it, not everything is an instantaneous, you know, instant gratification deal. It's, it's what happens down the road. I've had the same thing happen with predicting births. Uh, you know, things of that nature. It, it just, it happens. But it happens in a time frame that the universe says it's going to happen. Not today, not tomorrow, but maybe next week. Or hell, maybe an hour from now. You never know. You know, uh, but don't, again, don't go into anything with with the intent other than a pure intent. Let me tell you what that also means. I have a habit once in a blue moon. Believe it or not, I have a temper. Um really? Believe it or not, yes, why? and so, uh, yeah. <laughs> I had I got I was a little annoyed last night during the event, and that had the tendency to be able to sour my disposition because I'm somewhat of a perfectionist, if you can believe that. Um, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so what happened was is I got in my own head. Okay, I couldn't capture evidence for shit. I came into it with the wrong reason. I literally had to, thanks, Lori. Lori says, you, Richard? Never. Um, thanks, honey. Uh, but, you know, it's one of those kind of things where I, I had, thankful I had the right support system on my side. You know, my, my fiance and my friends and my team, and they they pulled me out of it. And But if you go into it um, with a poor intent, not only a poor intent, but a poor energy level, you can impact gladly gladly impact and or scaringly impact your investigation and or your outcome you can be somebody who becomes a target because mm -hmm. what have we said forever in a day energy breeds energy energy attracts energy so if you have negative or low vibrational energy going around you that's what you're going to attract so you need okay. to be aware. And I've talked to my team several times. Uh, we had one of our young guys uh, left last night because of physical illness. Had nothing to do with the paranormal. It was something to do with some bad Mexican food. Um, but he had to leave. And that kid was so disappointed that he had to leave. But he had to because he was doing himself no good. Um, he was sick as a dog. And that energy would have been his. That would have crippled him. In that yep. building in particular, well, it would have crippled him. He would have been exactly yep. the, the biggest target on his back because of how weak he was. And I'm not saying the kid's weak because the kid simply is tough as nails. But he was weak because he was ill. He was weak because he wasn't feeling well. Then I had a guest who was a friend of ours, and uh, she's super sensitive to the paranormal energy. And this one particular entity in the building just played with her like she was Play-Doh. She had to go. I literally had to say, you need to go home. That's how bad it got. So you got to really prepare yourself when you walk in there. A lot of the times with my team, when I have time to do stuff, I'm not doing an event. If I'm not doing an event, there's oftentimes, if not all the time, I will look at my team and go, is everybody okay? 
Is everybody straight? All right, okay. you ready to walk into this? You ready to do this? Are you? Okay, well, let's go. When I do an event, I don't have time for that. I, all the administrative crap wears me out, and I don't have time to do this. So I didn't have time to really check myself, but I noticed last night that I should have just, you know, followed my own preaching. Yeah. But we all, you know. this, this is a great reason, and, and you know, it, it keeps us humble, Richard, because we're, we're pretty, I like to think we're pretty experienced, but we still have our moments, and it's important, guys. If you think you know everything, you got to go back to school because, you know, we're continuing to learn every day. Uh, I hate the word expert because I feel like we're all students in this field. Um, but, yeah. you know, it, that just goes to show it doesn't matter how many investigations you've been to, you still fall into the human side of things, right? Um, it, it happens. Yeah. Now, Joshua said, I never asked for this spirit communication, but they won't leave me alone. What should I do to lead, to get them to leave me alone? I'm going to tell you now, if you have any abilities, it's not going to happen. <laughs> You're not going to be able to just keep them away and they're at bay. It's not going to happen. Um, there are ways that you can slow the roll. There are ways that you can protect yourself. There are ways that you can kind of block partially what's going on. But to think that you're going to be able to sit there and just say, yeah, I'm going to flip this switch. No. Right. No, that's not going to happen. You're going to have that ability, that interference in your life for the rest of your life. And I've so had people go, what's that? I was going to say, it's up to you, Joshua, to kind of set your precedents and kind of assert what you're willing to put up with. So you yeah. have the power as a sensitive to say, I'm not willing to accept this anymore. You need to back off. You have to realize that the power comes within you. Okay. My daughter right. had, my daughter, both my children are psychic and my daughter had an instance tonight where she was playing in a room and the door opened on its own and she got scared and she came running into my room and she said, mama, the, you know, the door, the door opened. And I said, well, honey, she said, what do I do? I said, well, what do you think you have to do? And she marched right back into that room and she said, you need to get out. And I, it's a good girl. You know, it's her that needs to, to kind of say, listen, she has that yeah. power as young as she is. And it's important, the faster that you kind of learn that, you have that power and you have the right to say, I no longer accept this or you're not welcome in my atmosphere. They really don't have any power. It's the fear that we entrust no, in ourselves. It's the, uh, the, the fear of unknowing or the fear of what could happen or the fear of watching too many horror stories, movies, that kind of, that's what that's they're in. That's the invitation. And so when you revoke that invitation and you say, get, you know, you're not welcome here, it doesn't have to be mean, uh, you know, no. you're going to, you're going to gain that power back. So I would encourage you to work with that. A lot of people ask me, including my daughter. So my, my mother-in-law, unfortunately, just recently passed away and she has made her presence known. She's let us know she's okay. She's transitioned. But my daughter said to me, uh, well, that could have, could have that been a granny that uh, opened the door. And I said, honey, granny would never, mm -hmm. never do anything like that to scare you. Okay. If, if that scared you and there's startled, yeah, startled, yeah, sure. scared. but if that scared you or you felt uncomfortable when that occurred, that's not granny. Granny would never try to scare you. Granny loved you. So it's really important, guys. Try not to be tricked by this stuff because they may sweep me up a little bit to gain that fear. But, you know, oh, yeah. whatever this was, it could have been completely innocent. It could have been just somebody coming through. Uh, it's, it's still, it's important that, that, that my daughter kind of said back off. And the same thing goes with you. There's no age range on this. You don't have to be a kid to know this. People who are coming into their abilities in their adulthood get intimidated. And it's important to kind of work with your perimeters. Right. You know, it is, it is that exact uh, situation. You, you've got to set your own boundaries. Um, I will tell you, I did a, a reading last night. It was impromptu. It was a lot of, a lot of them are for me. Sitting here taking a break during the event, I could get this message and this energy for this young girl and, and everything else. And it kind of came down to, you know, grounding. You need to go, and we've, Katie and I have talked about this. You need to go take your butt on down to moving water, strip off your shoes and socks. Plant your feet directly on the ground. Neutralize yourself. Give it a good 20 minutes. Just shut up and just absorb the energy that's going on around you. I know. It's funny to hear me say that, but it's the truth. The worst thing you could ever do is throw your own interference. So, you know, just be quiet. Just and sit there and absorb the, the natural, beautiful, high-frequency energy. And you walk out of there refreshed. You know, grounding is important. 
Um, there are times that you know, I, I take a salt bath probably once a month. Got to ground myself, got to protect myself. And it's not because I've got that many dead people hovering around me. But when you go on these investigations and you go to these places, and it's not exactly the, the entire attachment of a spirit, it's also the sludge. If there's energy in an area like that. You walking through that energy, that's coming home with you too. So there are times that you really have to sit back and go, Oop, I need to go grab myself some sea salt. I need to go take a bath. And you won't believe how well you feel afterwards, but there are reasons why that's necessary. Is reset your energy. You've got to reset your energy as often as you can, because if you don't, you'd be bogged down. And nobody needs to be bogged down. No, I agree. You know? Let, let's talk about, so, investigations. And let's talk about, say, you know, it doesn't even have to be an investigation. Say all of a sudden the, the, there's been, there has been an increase of activity in your location. So you never had a haunting before, but unfortunately now all of a sudden you're experiencing haunting or, or, or an increase in stuff. First thing you need to do is you need to determine what, you know, was there a, catastro a catastrophic incident or something that had a huge expulsion of energy around the location? You know, did they all of a sudden put up a wind terminal or, or um, did they put, uh, you know, did they put a hydro dam in? Did they, did they change things? Did they start construction around your house that could kind of open up the earth and make things change? Once you've determined that that has happened or has not happened, then you go through the process of elimination in your location. OK, so did you purchase something recently that could cause that attractant? You know, did you make changes to your location? If I had a nickel for every time someone said to me, well, no, I haven't changed anything, but I did end up renovating my bathroom or I did end up finishing my basement or I, it takes one little thing that can cause that attraction or wake up those those sleeping giants that can cause the activity to occur. Then the process of elimination becomes removing things from the location. So did you, if you purchased something recently, did you get that, that, that watch out as I talked about? Remove it from the location, see if the activity uh, is still going, see if the activity kind of slows down, and then bring it back in. You know, when if you're getting a team to come in to do the investigation for you, don't be afraid to mention that part. There's many times we've gone in to do an investigation, and by the end of it, we discover that, Something occurred that they just weren't, they didn't divulge at the beginning. And it's, that's the key of the investigation. So it's important uh, if you feel like you're experiencing something to really let your, the, the paranormal team know what is happening at that moment. Then you mm -hmm. take the process of cleansing that, that specific piece of, uh, you know, uh, equipment or, you know, that, that item that you have that you feel is haunted. Sometimes you have to get rid of it, you know, and sometimes it can be you investigating itself. So, you know, you've decided to buy a Ouija board because you want to, you want to, you know, have a conversation with Uncle Johnny and you didn't know how to close that door. Or you bought your own spirit box or you bought your own EV EMF detector and you're asking questions. It can come down to you using your phone as a recorder and opening that door of communication to the other side. You have opened a portal door. OK, so prior episodes, we talked about portals and, and we can get into it a little bit more. But essentially, that's what you're doing is you're opening that door of communication. Now, Francine said, can you somehow cleanse that piece of furniture? What's yes, that? absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it's really, um, I mean, you got that with people, furniture, everything. I came across a, um, a sincere war antique. It was a German soldier's helmet that the soldier had lost his life by taking a round to the head. Now, that is a metal helmet, okay, with a little strap inside to go over your head. The K2 meter on the helmet went absolutely insane because the energy was trapped with that helmet. You know, so yeah. yeah, I mean, you, you have to understand energy is trapped in a lot of different places. Antique store is the most haunted places you're ever going to go into, I think, outside of I'm things like churches stores. and hospitals. Yep. Prisons. Prisons is another one. Why on God's green earth would entities want to harbor at a prison? Why would you want to right. stay at a hospital? But again, we talked about that earlier in, in the show, that sometimes, even though it was not a pleasant home and it was literally prison by four walls, 
it was their home. It was the only place that they had. A lot of these guys and, and females that went into the prisons lost their family when they were incarcerated. In other words, they didn't have anything or they didn't have anything that they left behind when they went in for all those years. And so they that's their home. It may not be happy to you or the ideal place, but that's the place they were possessive about and called their space. And because of that emotional um, uh, sentiment we talked about, the you know, the, the possessiveness or the, the fact that it was the feeling of home, that's what keeps them there. They choose to stay in that spot. They're afraid of judgment. They're afraid to leave. They, they're possessive about that certain cell that they stayed in or even hospital room. A lot of these people spent many months in the hospital and again, it became home. So they developed a sentiment to the room, to the equipment, to the nurses and doctors. And that's what draws them to stay where they're at. It's not necessarily the fact that it's just because it's a hospital. Right. And, you know, and, and the things such as prisons and things like that, uh, Joshua, just to kind of let you know, um, from my experience, again, um, people are manifesting that people are situated in death worse than they are in life. So here's, you know, if you're a jerk in life, you're a real jerk in death. Okay. That's just the reality of it. Um, there are people out there that were bullies in school. Well, guess what? They probably remain bullies in death. Mm-hmm. Um, if they think they can scare you, that gets jollies for them, just like it did and, when they were alive. And we should clarify too: that's ghosts. That's not or that's not spirits that have transitioned over. That's the that's the ones Richard's talking about: the earthbound entities that choose to stay. And when they die, mm-hmm. they remain the same personality as they did in life. Yeah, it's their choice to stay. Is their choice to stay and create the havoc that they're having and getting because to them, again, it gets in their jollies. I have talked to many, many spirits who just said, I'm really liking this. Yeah. And they were acting like jerks to the living. But again, they were the same kind of people you would have had that same type of attitude that of when they were alive. Mm-hmm. You're personified in death, whatever you were in life. That's just my full belief. Sorry, Chris, don't unfriend me because with people it's this way. That's okay. Chris Madrid said, your lifestyle determines your death style. And that's absolutely correct in a lot mm-hmm. of ways. Uh, if you lived in fear and anxiety, a lot of times you'll experience that. You know, people who experience confusion at death, whether it be, you know, a, a quick death, car accident, uh, didn't know what was happening, death in sleep. Okay, death because of dementia or Alzheimer's. That's confusion. They didn't know what was happening. That may want to keep them here. You know, or it's that sentiment, right. that that possessiveness of wanting to be in that specific spot or that sentiment over the object that keeps them there. Yeah, um, that's true. I get, I get this question asked a lot, and I think, I think it's important to bring up. You know, people will say to me, well, you've got a lot of spirits from different ages. So hospitals, for example, we'll use hospitals or prisons. A lot of them did long stints. Prisons are longer stints, Ooh, as I'm shaking the camera. Um, hospitals. So, you know, hospitals can be a hundred years, right, old, Alfred. right? I'm just making a, making a number, but for a hundred years, people lived and died in the, in these locations. Do the spirits know each other's time frames? And the answer is yes, they can. Absolutely. They can. You have to understand that in this dimension, we have linear time. There's no such thing as time on the other side, but the entity is going to assimilate to what they're comfortable with. So if it was 1940s clothing, that's what they're going to assimilate to because that's what they're comfortable for. You're not going to see back to the future right. in terms of clothing for, for entities. You can choose what you want, but that's what they're going to kind of gravitate towards. That doesn't mean they can't communicate with each other when somebody died in the 80s and somebody died in the 40s and they're not having conversations. It is possible to communicate. It is possible for them to also communicate with us. Um, there are certain visions that I get going into locations where I will ask actually be brought back into that time frame so the entity will bring me back in a I, you know this weekend when i did an investigation i was brought back to the 40s why but there was a reason for it and it, she was trying to explain to me that that was her favorite time of life so she chose right. to go back to that time of life it was happy it was before she got sick it was before things happened um and so when you're communicating with these people you're going to notice that not, not only are they coming back to that time frame, but any trigger objects that you utilize during that investigation may bring them more interest at the same time. So, for example, that war helmet you referred to, um, you know, bringing that back to the to a war situation, that's going to kind of cause, I don't want to say cause a ruckus, but it's going to cause interest uh, on the other side. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. 
you know, that's this becomes a trigger object, right? We've all heard of trigger objects. Um, it might not belong to that particular soldier, right? But you may have a soldier from the other side of the war recognize what you're playing with, and that triggers them to react. Um, you know, and that's why a lot of people use trigger objects for that reason is to try to garner the the actual attention and the interest of a spirit that you know might not otherwise likely want to deal with you or you want to talk to you. But all of a sudden now you whip out a, a World War II German helmet that took a round to the forehead and they're like, Oh, I know Sometimes that it helmet. Them up. Sometimes it wakes them up or brick makes them present. So it's not even the fact that they want to communicate. It's it's that it's that commonality of sentiment of bringing them back to the forefront. We all know amnesia. Amnesia means that you the act of forgetting. And sometimes there's trivial moments where you're triggering that memory to come back into flourish. And that's what's occurring when you're uh, when you're dealing with these trigger objects. So you don't. Right. It doesn't have to be a haunted object in order to get the response. It's the fact that it comes down to a commonality with what occurred with that entity so you know it could be guns it could be you know maybe the, the person died by the gun or maybe it was a gun that killed them maybe it was the 1920s garb that get up that you're wearing or the old watch or uh you know something that caused it it even comes down to i find in a lot of aboriginal hauntings or native american or indigenous however you want to kind of say it um a lot of times these 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 hauntings are, are over land, what was sacred to them, what they cherished, what they were sentimental about, what they honored. And and you'll find that a lot of those hauntings are very hard to get rid of. It's the same with elementals. Right. Elementals, now I think somebody had mentioned about uh, you know, mystic, mystical beings. Elementals run under that in the sense that they were here long before spirits were, and they haunt these woods, they haunt these locations, they can they, they usually gravitate towards natural elements, so a, a bushed area or a water area or a fire area. Um, and basically what they're doing is the same thing. They're harboring in that location and they're territorial about it. So good luck getting rid of them. <laughs> yeah. Now, Chris had brought up even the ideal of cigarettes and perfume. But again, yeah. that's, another, that's something also, too, you're going to have to debunk because, again, stone tape theory, wood, stone, anything like that has the ability to retain energy. And that includes smell, especially wood. So I've seen, you know, situations where we're investigating this building. I got this person claiming they sell they smell cigarette smoke or cigar smoke every day at you know between these couple of hours. Ooh. So they got the table that they smell it in right next to the window where the sun beats on this table that is two hundred years old, and just by the reasoning of debunking i have to go you smell it yeah come here and smell this table because what happened was that that smell just absorbed and permeated the wood uh, and then of course you will have those things where i've had it before i smelled roses and i smelled perfumes and suddenly it was there then all of a sudden it was gone um and i've smelled that stuff as well but you got to really debunk those kind of things they are uh important to make sure you're you're really putting the truth out there about what it is and, and not knowing that, you know, it might be something else. You've got to investigate it. you got to look into it. Uh, there are always a lot of weird claims that come out of investigations, things you just got to sit there and scratch your head about. you got to dig into them. Um, yeah, elementals, tricky little devils. Charles Rudd said they are tricky little devils. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are because they, they are a very well-faceted entity. They're not just one kind of, you know, here's this an elemental, they're all the same. No, no, they're not. Um, they have the ability to be several different directions, if you want to use it as, that as a term. They can go in several different directions. They don't just have to be one particular type. It's not one size fits all. Um, you know, just kind of putting that out there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joshua says, and then before you know it, it dissipates. So I rush to get a witness with the smells. Um, yeah, I mean, it's always good to have somebody with you to kind of confirm what you're dealing with, what you're smelling, what you're seeing, what you're hearing. You know, when I have uh, an EVP session going on and I hear something, uh, typically I don't wear earbuds and I, I don't wear uh, headphones. Um, I'm clear audience, so I tend not to. And I will hear something said 
and I will confirm it with somebody else wearing a recorder and earbuds just to back up what I heard. You know, now we may have to go back on that recorder manually and play it back on the Bluetooth speaker and go, oh, crap, yeah, you did hear us get told to get the hell out. You know, yeah, that happens. But that's that's the thing. You just got to try to debunk yourself to death on things, not overdo it, but you really do need to make sure your facts are checked and, and what you're going through is, is the truth. Um, you do have to remember that a lot of times that entities will do whatever they can to get energy from you. So you've got to realize, you know, a lot of times in, in paranormal experiences, uh, heart rate increases pretty dramatically. Uh, and that's what happens when your heart rates, you give out thermal heat. Who's wanting the thermal heat? Spirits want the thermal heat. The entity is wanting the thermal heat. So, you know, you've got to look at things in that regard too. Um, yeah, you're right. Where is the world is Nikki tonight? I didn't see her come in here tonight. She's my biggest cheerleader. Um, She's busy, obviously. She's got something going on. We miss you, Nikki. Be, that's not allowed, Nikki. <laughs> I didn't uh, get a memo about you taking a night off as a fan. <laughs> what the hell? Um, I'm not in Earl, it. Earl says, Katie, is that your safe room? Lots of beautiful salt lamps behind you. The answer is yes. This is the office that I work in. So this is my, I, this isn't just for show. There's a lot of beautiful stuff there, but I do use it for cleansings, healings, all of that stuff. I do readings out of this. So this is my, my office where I work out of. So, so you beautiful people get to see what I do every day. And I sit here and I talk to you guys. Um, and so, yes, I do. I, I'm a big fan of salt lamps. I have them all over my house. This is just, just for show. I really use them. Uh, my family members say I have a problem <laughs> And I probably yeah. do, but you can never have too much salt, right? No, you're right. You know, a lot of regards, you can't. Um, that may be the reason why I have high blood pressure. You never know. Um, <laughs> I don't need it. Got to be careful <laughs> with that salt. Yeah, don't go around licking it, okay? That would be not be cool. That would not mm -hmm. be cool. Um, guys, I, I do want to tell you, if uh, as tonight winds down, because holy crap, we're almost out of this hour and a half. Um, yeah, as the night winds down, I want to say thank you, uh, uh, all of you, for attending tonight. Um, if you have, as Kitty said, like what you've heard or seen, because I know I'm not the pretty one, but you know, um, if you do like what you've heard or seen, please share the show. We so appreciate people getting to hear the information that we, we do all this just to be able to give out that information. So we, we ask you to go ahead and share the show. Um, thank you, Joshua. He said you both are the best. Thank you. We appreciate that. Um, we try. I mean, we, we really try to help everybody out. It is a, a labor of love because I guarantee you we're not paying bills with this. So, yeah, that's not happening. Uh, but we're doing it just for you guys. We've always done it just for you guys. Uh, we've been doing this now over a year and a half, Kitty and I have. I did it before that for two other years prior to that. Uh, you know, I mean, she is uh, the, the best uh, co-host I've had and a dear friend, so that helped. But, okay. you know, we're at this now. <laughs> Checks in the mail. Checks in the mail. Um, you know, so we do have that. Uh, thank you, Charles. Appreciate it. Thank you, Alfred. Appreciate it. But if you guys have a topic, you know, because honestly doing this now, like I was kind of mentioning how many years it's been done. We're talking about close to four. Holy crap. Almost two with Katie now. Um, you know, you think you start running out of topics. <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, you know, we, can, we cover so many things so long. So if you guys <laughs> have something you'd like to hear about, we'd like to hear about it so we can kind of bring it up and discuss it. Um, that's what the show is titled. Let's talk about it. So, you know, I want to have that opportunity. Katie wants that opportunity. Reach out to either one of us. Reach out to the show's Facebook page. Let's talk about it. Does have its own Facebook page. We also have a really, really cool mug. Um, that's right. We have merch. Uh, you still haven't gotten yours. One of us has a real cool mug. <laughs> one of us. <laughs> Whoops. I have cool mugs. I got a lot of cool mugs. I just don't have a hundred. Uh, uh, let's talk about it. Mug let's yet. talk about it. Um, you know, guys, is is just our our entire thought process is about you guys. Our entire desire to continue to do this every Sunday night is entirely on for you guys. We we can I can do other things on a Sunday night. <laughs> 
We don't I can't think of another place I want to be than with you guys right here. Oh, uh, is, is there a check in the mail for Katie? Because, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, so we, now wait a minute. I'd like you to talk about new devices to use, such as radiation meters. Uh, we did we did an equipment show, what, about a month ago? Yeah, we did. We've done a few equipment shows, but we can always do yeah. more. We can always talk about more equipments. You know, if it, the best thing about this show is that we have this is all recorded. So if you want to catch you, up on the episodes, you can go back to the Let's Walk, Let's Talk About It Facebook page. If you don't know where it is, you can't find it, DM us. We'll try and send you in the right direction. All the prior episodes are there. So the best part about it is you can watch them as many times as you want and get the information. They're all tagged and dated. So if that's something that you're interested in and you want to watch a specific episode, it talks about each one. Right. Yeah. Uh, so Thank we can do Lori. that. If you've got a particular... Huh? So Lori says, love Sunday nights watching your show, and we love you come around. Uh, yeah. Checks Lori's in the mail, that. Lori. Good stuff. Yes. Checks uh, in the mail. Now, Earl had said, where are you both from? Uh, so he is from northwestern Indiana. I am located in Ontario, Canada. I'm way up in the Great White North. And Sir Richard, okay. where are you located, sir? I am located in a wonderful place called Rising Fawn, Georgia, in the North Georgia Mountains. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, out here in a, where the green grass grows. Yeah, we have, all we have is white snow. Yeah, we don't have any of that here. That's kind of not the way it works. Not in the South. No, no, it doesn't. Um, so have you got any investigations coming up before we kick out? Uh, no one. It's it's Corona. It's COVID. There's not a lot happening. We do have, have some places lined up, but we, we're kind of holding off. We've got some vulnerable people in the, on the team, and I certainly don't want to put anybody in any harm's way. Thank so we're you, kind Lori. Of holding off. We do have a lineup coming up. Um, but other than that, I'm just, we're, do, we're still doing cleansings for people who want cleansings when it comes to dire need. We did a cleansing last week, uh, you know, in remote investigations, but other than that, it's just readings. We have an investigation coming up Saturday night. How cool is that? Okay. So talk about it, sir. Tell everybody, fill everybody in quickly. Thank you, Joshua. Yeah, uh, it is at a wonderful, wonderful location called Stately Oaks Manor. Stately Oaks Manor is exactly what it sounds, old antebellum type manor or house. Um, wildly active. Really? Wildly. We, we did the world's largest ghost hunt, uh, number six. We did hour, hour worth of time, hour, time, because uh, they give you an hour's worth of live feed, and we did our hour live feed at this location. Um uh, Busy. Busy. Right on. Yeah, so we're going to be doing that this Saturday. Um, the, uh, the illustrious future Mrs. Rulin is going to be doing it with me and then uh, two people from a team that have been there a couple of times before. So we are going to go see what we can see. And hopefully it all works out for the best. They're talking possibly doing events. Mm, how cool is that? Well, if I ever get down to the States... Whatever opens, and I can go down there. Yeah, if you're ever allowed to bucket leave list, home. Bucket list happening. I have a whole bunch of places. Telling you. Yeah. Telling you. Yeah, this place is gorgeous. It still has an original schoolhouse in the back, slave yeah. quarter. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Yeah, we still, we have not. Hey, good night, Alfred. Um, we have not really been affected a whole lot by COVID. So I can say that our, our investigations continue on. Um Good. Yeah, Chris, I hear you, man. It's it is for me about a three plus almost three and a half hour drive from where I live to get there. Um, it's on the uh, south side of Atlanta, um, which means you've got to go through Atlanta to get there. I'm not a big fan of going through Atlanta. Uh, yeah, Love thank Atlanta. you, Tower. We appreciate it. Yes, thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Thanks. Yeah, guys, we, we cannot do this without you. We appreciate your time. And we thank you for the show ideas. Um, we will do our best to try to bring them together for you. And uh, thank you again, guys, for showing up. We appreciate you for doing that. As always, you guys do have an incredible ability to show up. And we're yes, very thankful you. for that. 
Yeah. And guys, at that point, we're going to go ahead and bid you a good night. And we will see you again next Sunday. Next Sunday. Hang tough. Talk Bye, to you guys everybody. later. Bye.